Well, I had some technical difficulty there. Uh, I started pretty much right on time here in the parking lot of Sprouts. And I think my battery in my camera here is uh, uh, strong, strong enough. But it cut me off after just a few moments of, uh, of broadcast. But uh, possibly because what I had said so far was not worth recording. Uh, anyway, here comes another big noisy truck. So it must be time for me to start. No, that was just me. I, I didn't say anything, actually. Uh, I've been, I'm constantly in the, in the process of uh, uh, creating and revamping and uh, uh, getting ready for uh, uh, various video presentations and things like that. And I've been doing a lot of that during the uh, last, last couple years. Hopefully, I'll be able to, uh, circumstances will allow me to, to uh, get out and about. Uh, uh, next year a little bit more for live uh, appearances and things like that but uh, anyway I uh, right now I'm uh, uh, brushing up uh, revamping and reviewing uh, uh, material about uh, tarot because I speak about tarot uh, an awful lot and tarot is a, uh, a very big uh, part of my uh, uh, my magical work, I guess uh, you would say. And so from time to time, I, uh, I, uh, I have the pleasure of reviewing uh, uh, Crowley books, especially the Book of Thoth. Crowley's Book of Thoth, you can call it Thoth if you want, I don't care, or Tot, or Tahuti. But um, it never fails to amaze me when I read the Book of Thoth or perhaps Magic and Theory and Practice or Book 4. Material that I've read literally in the last 50 years, I've read hundreds of times. Uh, it amazes me how different the book is and my understanding of what he said it's truly it's it's like the the words when the when the book is closed and in my in my library the words must morph around and change into other words that are more understandable i don't know what's going on but each time i pick it up Things that I thought made sense to me before, or things I skimmed over, or some, all of a sudden just make profound sense. As if the more you read Crowley, the easier and the simpler his explanations and his, the, his teachings uh, seem to be especially with the, the, the Book of Thoth. Now, if you don't have a Book of Thoth, they're, they're out in various, uh, various editions. Um, and this is the one that Constance and I both dog ear. Uh, it's, a, it's a biohazard, but now. Uh, there's a beautiful edition of, uh, that Weiser does, which is a hard, hardcover uh, uh, facsimile edition with, uh, you know, beautiful color, color. Uh, plates and things like that. But when I am called upon to do an introductory tarot uh, talk, and because uh, my tarot and, and my use of tarot and my what tarot means to me is so connected uh, to my magical practices and meditations, that I have to explain stuff about Kabbalah too. In in my book, the Understanding Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot, uh, I've got the whole front section of the book uh, 
discovering little things you should know uh, before you know anything <laughs> about Crowley. And the, the little things you got to know about Kabbalah, and little things you got to know about uh, uh, the Golden Dawn, and little things you got to know about Thelema and, and the changing of the age and and uh, magical formulas. And there's all little little background things uh, at Crowley's uh, relationship with uh, Frida Harris, that once you have those little pieces of information floating around in your mind, uh, then the then the Book of Thoth sort of opens up opens up to you. Today, this morning, just before we got in the car to do our our uh, shopping marathon, uh, I was reading Crowley's attempt to start from scratch with people to explain tarot. And at first, I remember when I first read it, okay, I picked up the book of those, like, oh, finally, this is going to make sense. Tara, that was so long ago that I was just hoping for a book to say, oh, the high priestess card. Oh, that means you're going to meet a foxy young gal and, and she's going to, you know, she's mysterious and she's going to be your initiatrix or the, the lover's card. Oh, you're going to get lucky. I wanted a stupid just book like that, you know, because I, I had these tarot cards. I wanted to do something with them. Instead, I got something that sounded like this. It started out okay. The contents of tarot, of the tarot. The tarot is a pack of 78 cards. There are four suits, as in modern playing cards, which are derived from it. But the court cards number four instead of three. In addition, there are 22 cards called trumps, each of which is a symbolic picture with a title to itself. At first sight, one would suppose this arrangement to be arbitrary, but it is not. It is necessitated, as will appear later, by the structure of the universe, and in particular of the solar system, as symbolized by the Holy Kabbalah. I went, whoa, this is a heavier book. And then he goes on to say, and this will be explained in due course. I'll digress long enough to say in due course, has lasted 48 years. And it's still coursing. It's still nothing. Anyway, the origin of tarot is the next heading. The origin of this pack of cards is very obscure. Some authorities seek to put it back as far as the ancient Egyptian mysteries. Others try to bring it forward as late as the 15th or even 16th century. But the tarot certainly existed in what may be called the classical form as early as the 14th century. For packs of that date are extant, and the form has not varied in any notable respect since that time. In the Middle Ages, these cards were much used for fortune-telling, especially by gypsies, so that it was customary to speak of the tarot of the Bohemians, or Egyptians. When it was found that the gypsies, despite the entomology, were uh, of Asiatic origin, some people tried to find a source in Indian art and literature. Now, he could have just started with this sentence. There is no need to enter into any discussion of these disputed points. The theory and correspondence of tarot. Can you see me getting lost? Unimportant to the present purpose are tradition and authority. Einstein's theory of relativity does not rest on the fact that when his theory was put to test, it was confirmed. The only theory 
of ultimate interest about the tarot is that it is an admirable symbolic picture of the universe based on the data of the Holy Kabbalah. It will be proper later in this essay to describe the Holy Kabbalah somewhat fully and to discuss relevant details. Now, remember, I'm still trying to get the just the buzzword meanings of these cards. But I read on. The part of which is here relevant is called gematria, a science in which the numerical value of a Hebrew word, each letter being also a number, links that word with others of the same value, or a multiple thereof. Now, back then, that didn't mean anything to me. I was He was losing me already. But right now, I'm thinking, my God, Crowley is saying so much in so few words that are so clear and make so much sense without one wasted syllable. But back then, it was really rough. For example, a kad, unity, 1 plus 8 plus 4 equals 13, and a heba, love, 1 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5 equals 13. This fact is held to indicate the nature of unity is love. Then, yod heh vav -Hey, Jehovah, 10 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 equals 26, which is 2 times 13. Therefore, Jehovah is a unity manifested in duality. I read that this morning, and it, the, the traditional, okay, wow, that explains so much. The, the, the demiurge, uh, number four on the, on the, the tree of life, the, the, the first manifest uh, sephira uh, below the abyss, uh, 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 Hesed, the, the, the mercy, the, the king of the gods, the sphere of Jupiter, the demiurge, all manifest creation. The, the demiurge is the god we think is god, but it, uh, or who, who thinks he is God, or it is God, but it isn't God. It doesn't know that there's there's three more subtle uh, 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 bits of mechanics that went into the creation of number four. And Jehovah is the original demiurge. He's the original God of four. That's why he's got the four-letter name, yod heh vav -Hey. And what that is Jehovah is unity, but manifest in duality. The entire duality universe of the macrocosm. It's just perfect. And Crowley said it in one, two, three, four, five, six words. Explaining two times 13. Jehovah is a unity manifested in duality. But uh, you're likely to just skip right past that at the very beginning of your Crowley studies, and so forth. One important interpretation of tarot is that it is a notericon, he hasn't explained that yet, of the Hebrew Torah, the law, also troa, the gate, now, by Yetzeratic attributions, he hasn't explained that yet, but says table, see table it in. By the Yetzeratic, 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 I always mispronounce that, attribution, see table it in, this word may be read the universe, the newborn sun, zero. This is the true magical doctrine of Thelema, zero equals two. Also, by gematria, the numerical value of Troa is 671 equals 61 times 11. Now, 61 is Ain, 
hasn't explained it. Nothing or zero. And 11 is the number of magical expansion. He doesn't explain why. Uh, in this also, therefore, <laughs> Troa announces the same doctrine, only the only satisfactory philosophical explanation of the cosmos, its origin, mode, and object. Now, that is sublime and clear and concise. And if you do know a little bit about what a Yetzeratic attribution is and, and uh, uh, what Ain is and uh, an idea of what zero equals two is about, all of a sudden that just puts all the puzzle pieces back in place. And something that you read in the opening act of your magical career is something that when you reread it in later chapters of your magical career, just come alive. They, it unfolds like a flower. Okay. Then he says, complete mystery surrounds the question of the origin of this system. He's talking about Kabbalah. Complete mystery surrounds the question of the origin of this system. Any theory which satisfies the facts demands assumptions which are completely absurd. To explain it all, where did Kabbalah come from, in other words? To explain it all, one has to postulate in the obscure past a fantastic assembly of learned rabbins. The Zuru Babel Institute of Philosophical Youth. Who solemnly calculated all sorts of combinations of letters and numbers and created the Hebrew alphabet on this series of manipulations. This theory is plainly contrary, not only to common sense, but to the, to the facts of history <laughs> and to all that we know about the formation of language. Nevertheless, the evidence is equally strong that there is something, not a little of something, but a great deal of something, a something that excludes all reasonable theories of coincidence in the correspondence between words and numbers. It is an undeniable fact that any given number is not merely one or more of the previous number and one less than the subsequent number, but is an independent, individual idea, a thing in itself a spiritual, moral, and intellectual substance, not only as much as, but a great deal more than any human being. Its merely mathematical relations are indeed the laws of its being, but they do not constitute the number any more than the chemical and physical laws of reaction in the human and uh, at a, at a, atomomy give a complete picture of a man. Okay. That is, that is so loaded that ought to be just clipped out and sent as postcards to probationers or something like that. But I want to, I want to end with this part right here. Because when I first read this, probably in 1970. No, something. Gee, uh, it was before my son was born, so in the early 70s. I had no idea of how magic and the study of magic was going to uh, uh, shape my life, my career, my spiritual, uh, uh, for sake of a better word, development. I had no idea that sometime in the future I would, in order for me to study this myself and to explain it to others, that I would invent 
a rabbi that that could speak for me. Okay, I can invent a pseudepigraphic character. Of course, the Rabbi Lam had been Clifford, uh, and the Zuru Babel Institute of uh, Philosophical Youth, and uh, Chicken Kabbalah, and Son of Chicken Kabbalah. Had no idea that was in my future when I read that. Okay. The next section here in the Book of Thoth, and this is where I'll close today. The evidence for the initiated tradition of the tarot. One, Eliphas Levi, or Levi, and the tarot. Although the origins of tarot are perfectly obscure, there is a very interesting piece of quite modern history, history well within the memory of living man, which is extremely significant and, and will be found as the thesis develops to sustain it in a very remarkable way. In the middle of the 19th century, there arose a very great Kabbalist and scholar who still annoys dull people by his habit of diverting himself at their expenses by making fools of them posthumously. His name was Alphonse Louis Constant, and he was an abbe of the Roman Church. For his nom de guerre, he translated his name into Hebrew, Eliphas Levi Zahed. He's very generally known as Eliphas Levi. Eliphas Levi was a philosopher and an artist, besides being a supreme literary stylist and practical joker of the variety called Pince Sans Rie. That's probably not how to pronounce that. It just more or less means a guy with a dry, dry oh, sense oh. of humor. Uh, and being an artist and a profound symbolist, he was immensely attracted by tarot. While in England, he proposed to Kenneth Mackenzie, Golden Dawn folks will perk up there, a famous occult scholar and high-grade Freemason, to reconstitute and issue a scientifically designed pack. In his works are new presentations by him of the trumps called the Chariot and the Devil. He seems to have understood that the tarot was actually a pictorial form of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which is the basis of the whole Kabbalah so much so that he composed his works on this basis. All the chapter heads and everything were broken up into 22s and 3s and 6s and 12s. <clears throat> uh, he wished to write a complete treatise on magic, and he divided his subject into two parts, theory and practice, which he called dogma and ritual. Each part has 22 chapters, one for each of the 22 trumps, and each chapter deals with the subject represented by the picture displayed by the trump. The importance of the accuracy of the correspondences will appear in due course. Well, I'll, I'll digress and explain it. Eliphas Levy wrote perfect commentaries for each of the tarot cards so much so that it was obvious which tarot card he was describing. But he assigned his explanations to different cards. He, in other words, he mixed up the title of the card that he was working uh, with, with its explanation. But all you have to do is open your eyes for a second. You say, oh, no, he's really talking about the chariot here. Or, oh, no. No, no, no. He's really talking uh, about the strength card or the, or the, or uh, justice. You know, it's as if he did it on purpose. You know, so as to not break some uh, oath that he took, uh, oath of secrecy that he took seriously. But I digress. 
The importance of the accuracy of the correspondence uh, will appear in due course. Here we come to a slight complications. The chapters correspond, but they correspond wrongly, and this is only to be explained by the fact that Levi himself found bound by his original oath of secrecy to the order of initiates, which had given him the secrets of the tarot. Okay, uh, the next thing, uh, I may continue this tomorrow, is... Uh, uh, the tarot as it relates to the cipher manuscripts of the of the Golden Dawn, which I think would be fun to do. My point is that truly, you know, it's fine. And in most cases, if you're a mature person and and uh, and serious, it's f fine to. Uh, uh, join together and take part in in orders and group group workings and uh, group uh, studies and group initiations and things like that but always keep in mind that that no matter how uh, imminent these organizations are the what really makes them great and the inner teachings that really make them great are anything but secret and that if you have eyes to see uh you'll you'll realize that the, that the truly valuable secret information is something that's already out there in the same way as Eliphas Levy's uh, trick of uh, mixing up the, the the tarot correspondences all you needed was to just go the extra mile and to say no nah, he's mixed these up in this point the same thing might be said for the, for uh, those of us that revere the Sefer Yet Zaira. Uh, almost every Sefer Yet Zaira or translation of Sefer Yet Zaira that you get assigned different Hebrew letters to different planets and elements and zodiac acts. Almost all of them uh, differ with each other in one way or another, and that's partially because it's just so old; it's been mixed up. But also, from a cosmic perspective, it's because you're just obliged to go just the extra mile and put it together uh, uh, yourself in a more in a more logical way. But anyway, that's my little speech for the day. Gee, my, my phone crapped out on me when I first tried to do this this morning, so I don't even know if this... Uh, 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 this has been, <laughs> if you're out there, okay, uh, I hope so. Uh, tomorrow, I think I will pick it up uh, tomorrow because this is just such an interesting thing and it's, uh, uh, it's sort of exciting me to, to uh, uh, go over this little part of the, the Book of Thoth uh, from the perspective of a 74-year-old chicken capitalist. So until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Tomorrow is Alistair Crowley's birthday, if I'm not mistaken. We'll do something. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under well.